It is Monday, May 30th, 2022. This is a special holiday edition of Baseball Today presented to you by our friends over at Shady Rays. We'll tell you how you can look even better than this. And they've got the best guarantee around. If you break them, if you lose them, they'll replenish them. And with that, once again, it is week two of the Trevor Plouffe vacation excursion overseas. So filling in for him today, the one and only left-hander out of the pen, Jerry Blevins wearing his Bengals lid, trying to catch my ire on this day for this Browns fan. How you doing, dude? I'm wonderful. I am, I am trying to, to to get you a little bit, knowing that you're a Cleveland sports fan. Yes. Um, but my hair, I don't know if you can take Whoa. a look at this. This is more to just cover the lid. Wow. So this is, it's wild. Did you see it? I did. Uh, yeah, there you go. So you, it looks like you went about one guard on the side and then just let the rest of it well this is the normal haircut like this is i can style it but when i don't when i don't like do it after the shower this is what it looks like all natural and so i have to contain it and this is the hat that's here okay by the way i'm at i'm at lake erie right now i'm on the the west side here with my family for memorial day weekend we have my my brother and his his family my mom was here so we're at our uh, at the place at the lake and just enjoying the beautiful weekend so wait, are you on the west side of the state or the east yeah, side? Yeah, I'm in of the state? Port Port Clinton. I'm on the I'm on the Port just Clinton. straight north here. Okay, good. Close to Cedar Point for those of you who are amusement park enthusiasts. Beautiful Sandusky, Ohio. Been That's there right. many, many times. Well, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate everybody joining us, whether it's podcast version on our YouTube channel or live on the AMP app. And obviously, uh today, uh, a day of remembrance. Uh it is Memorial Day. Um, so while you are enjoying the time with your family and your friends, which you should be doing, take a second, talk about it. Let's remember the reason why many of us are not working on this day and why we have the chance to be free and why we have the chance to discuss things that are going on in this world. It's because people made the ultimate sacrifice. And so, you know, talk to your kids about it, why today is so special and why we honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice out there. Um, It is not a full slate of baseball, which kind of mystifies me. I don't ever get that. I think on national holidays, all 30 teams should be playing. Um, That's neither here nor there. Maybe we will get to that a little bit later. But I do want to talk about a lot of stuff that happened. And I guess the most interesting thing that happened in the baseball world has nothing to do with baseball, but rather fantasy football. The slap heard around the world, the one that made Will Smith stand up on edge and say, Tommy Pham, what the hell were you doing? (laughs) Yes, there was a slap before batting practice in Cincinnati between the Reds outfielder and the Giants outfielder, and they made no bones about it, about what it was about. So let's hear from both parties. Wild. We were in a fantasy fantasy league together. I put somebody, a player, on the injured reserve when they were listed as out. There was a text message in the group saying that I was cheating. Uh, because I was stashing players on my bench. Only time we texted was in the uh, in the group text, and yeah, I mean it was over a year so ago. Slap Josh. I did some some shit I don't condone, you know. So I had to address it. What he forgot to tell you guys too, you know, he said some disrespectful shit in a text message, and I called him out on it. So it was regarding, you know, my former team. Fucking with my money, then you're gonna, you're gonna say some disrespectful shit. You know, there's a, there's a code to this. I did send a GIF in the group chat that was making fun of the Padres. It was supposed to be a friendly thing, just making fun of, they were playing bad and just talking back and forth. And uh, yeah, I mean, he did not like that and responded uh jock i don't know you well enough to make any jokes like this i wrote back i'm just trying to pull it up so it's exact was meant to be all fun and games no hard feelings sorry if you took it that way um and then about two weeks later after like week four or five uh he ended up leaving the league and uh, there's been no communication since was this good or bad for baseball I think it's good for baseball. It's, it's a topic that's 
baseball doesn't get brought into the the realm of uh, a regular conversation regularly and there's so many people that play fantasy football and are very passionate about it including myself and this is you know minus the slap which is I'm uh, unheard of and unnecessary as an adult in any form. You know, there's very rare, especially over fantasy football. Um, but it, it's very topical for so many people out there. And it's an absolute conversation to have because I'm sure many people would want to slap somebody in their league as well. Jeff Wilson of the San Francisco 49ers had 79 carries last year. And now he is at the center of the biggest football fan- fantasy football controversy we have had in this nation. I, I think there are so many people that can relate to it because we've all mm. been like, dude, that move you made was so fucked up. You can't do that. And <laughs> then, but first of all, how much money were, were they playing for, dude? I mean, I mean, for a grown man to slap another grown man, um, pretty, you know, and he, he used some, some colorful language. I don't know, Tommy fam. I don't really know Jock Peterson either. So I don't know character wise what's going on, but it had to be significant significant i'm saying five figures at least oh yeah at least yeah. at least like yeah because it's rare figures. usually usually you you pick guys on your own team and you mm-hmm. can you can get the stakes can get high um uh, but they're in the you know inner division rivalry so this has to be like a, some pretty big stuff so what was the what was the highest league you played in the money wise mm-hmm. uh i think I got uh, with the Mets. My one year was like two thousand, three thousand uh, dollars buy-in. Was one year, um, which is a lot of money. Well, when you get crazy. a lot of people involved in it, yeah. And I was like, I, I, we all agreed to it, and then they're like, all right, this is how much you owe. We need it by draft day. Everybody's like, well, because there's some you know lower rung guys in there, but um, yeah, it, it was. <laughs> I, you know, that, that gets, that gets up there too. But, um, this is when you got to have a good commissioner of your league to be able to say, Hey, jock, you can't do that. We're going to switch that out. That's when you got to go to the authorities. That's when MLB has to step up and say, Hey, you know, this is, you know, like, like fam said, you're messing with his money. People are going to take a personal. And apparently when something that significant is on the line, I think he said, I'm a big shot in Vegas. Is that a true quote? I believe something like that might be a high roller of some sort. I mean, that's another been. level of gambling that I don't want to be uh, involved with too. Uh, but I guess you don't mess with Tommy and his money. So he's not going to be invited to any of my leagues. Or if I get invited to one of his, I'm out. I love competition. I'm for that. But, you know, based on a, what you heard this weekend, would you invite Jock? Yeah, man, I think so. Because the group chat, you can talk smack to each yes. other. That's what you want. You want you want action in the group chat. You want people to have fun. He's taking it serious. The worst part about fantasy football is when you have somebody in the league that's not doing anything. Right. They don't set not, their lineup or anything. Absolutely. Horrible. But again, you need a commissioner to say, Jock, that's that's Bush League stuff. I know it's you're able to do it, but this is, you know, with COVID, all these like uh you know, injured list and the, the being able to put guys out made it kind of complicated. So oh my God. this this why I was wild. By the way, the best part of the meme that was sent out there, whether we're going GIF or GIF these <laughs> days, I don't know. But uh, when when the lady throws the sandbag up and it lands on her head, the guy in the middle, the quick step that he does, like he's so startled by it, but he doesn't know exactly what to do. <laughs> I, watch when it, watch him, watch the quick step. <laughs> <laughs> Underrated that part of great. the meme, like oh, the Dodger guy. Oh, oh God, that's, that's good. so great. All right, that's let's funny, actually, man. And if you can't laugh what? at that. Yeah, there's there's definitely something going on. Um, yeah, yeah, there's the that's again, Tommy Pham seems like I, I don't know him at all. Right. He doesn't seem like the life of the party in a fun way for me. Yeah, I, I do hope that like all kidding aside, like I hope that if there's something going on that, hey, maybe maybe yeah. this is the time where he realizes time to take a step back, maybe go get a little help if you need it. That's okay. The, the fact that he, I think Jock said that he left the league, like literally was out, you know, mid season. That's a big deal for you to, yeah. to, to abandon a league. And that's, you know, that's a lot of things that have to be shuffled. So I, I don't know who, who else is in that league, but they, they had to scramble for a bit. I'm going to go do a little digging on that. 
All right, let's get to some actual baseball. Sunday night, uh, the Mets end up sweeping the Phillies. Uh, so Philly has now lost 10 of 14. They are 21 and 27. There was a column in the Philadelphia Inquirer that a bunch of the families of the players had been reaching out to them and saying, it looks like you guys are miserable out there. Like even when you're winning games, you don't look happy. And a couple of the players actually said, yeah, the energy has not been great. Are you worried about whether it's Joe Girardi or some sort of move that could be made with this team? Uh, I am worried. I'm not sure what move can be made, but um, I, watching, you know, the Mets are, are what I do on my, my day-to-day basis. I have Shea Station with, with John Boy. I do some, some uh, analyst work for SNY, the, the regional sports network for the Mets. They do look, they do look like they're not having fun out there. Um, there's a lot of pressure that gets put on a team that, that went out and tried to win and they're not playing up to it. Um, something needs to change in that clubhouse. I don't know if it's, but I don't know if it's all the way panic mode, but there's where there's smoke, there's some fire there. And having a couple of players say, yeah, man, I see it. And I feel it like Kyle Gibson, you know, he talked, he said something very poignant, which was, he's like, I'm 35, you know, I'm trying to win. Um, Some of these guys, these young guys may not see it as, um, the light at the end of the tunnel, but I do, I see my playing career coming down. I want to make sure that I have fun and win winning is fun. Um, so maybe if they, they relax a little bit and remember that they're playing a game. So there, there's something to it because they don't look a team that's full of a lot of fun personalities to not be having fun is, is definitely signs of, of something going on inside that clubhouse. It, it may not be friction or anything. It just may, they need to need to take a step back and, and have a team meeting and be like, Hey, let's relax. Let's go out there because you know, the Mets are looking great. The Braves are still the Braves coming off of a, a world series win. Um, and the Marlins look great with their pitching staff. So if the Phillies don't figure it out quick, they're, they're going to be buried in a division. I don't, it's the least comfortable part of what I do for a living and have done for 30 years. And that's talking about guys' job securities because it's so much more for fans. It's just like, oh, we got to get rid of that manager. Oh, we got to get rid of that coach. You're talking about people's lives changing. And I'm not saying that, listen, they get paid very well. Uh, They understand it when they accept the responsibility that ultimately they might be the fall person. But there is something going on here. And this is Joe Girardi's last year. And the fact that they made the change and essentially said, Joe Girardi's going to be the difference maker here. He's going to be the guy that, you know, we hired Gabe Kapler. We gave him a couple of years. It was his first job. He might be a good manager now. Well, guess what? He's setting records out there in San Francisco. They won 107 freaking games last year. So maybe he wasn't the problem. Um, Philly has spent for this team unlike it ever has before. This is a record-setting payroll. It's the first time they're going over the threshold all this sort of stuff. And we looked at the team, the way it was constructed, and we were like, they better mash. They better score yeah. seven or eight runs a game because we're not so sure about the pitching, and we definitely know about the defense. And the defense has been even worse than I thought it would be. They are yeah. last in defensive runs saved. It's been horrible. This weekend alone, we saw them kick it around. At the beginning of the Sunday night game, I felt so bad for uh, for Zach Wheeler. You know, they have a play at first and third, and – you know, Hoskins gets the ball and he makes a terrible throw and, you know, Camargo makes a terrible throw home and doesn't keep his foot on the bag. And when you're playing like that, Jerry, you know that the minute you make a mistake, it's going to snowball. Yeah, those are, like you said, you feel for Wheeler. Wheeler's been there. We've been on a, a team together with the Mets that went offense first and sacrificed a lot of defense. Um, that puts so much more pressure on your starting pitching. And for these guys are really good. You have Aaron Nola, who's, you know, uh, I'd say a perennial Cy Young candidate, at least. Zach Wheeler, who I think should have won it last year. Um, you paying these guys big money. I think Kyle Gibson was a great sign, and he's pitched really well. Um, Bryce Harper getting hurt, uh, not being able to play the outfield, really makes their defense even worse. Um, and it makes it glaring and those guys don't get time off because they have to play the field, but also, also having the DH in the national league. Now you it get to see how good season. Bryce Harper, it saved their season and it saved the fans because we still get to see Bryce Harper back. Totally. Yeah. And he's, and he's, you know, hitting at an MVP level, um, in spite of, but they, 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 they need to shake some things up. Schwarber's not hitting, 
Uh, Castellano seems like he's breaking out of it a little bit, but they're they're in some dire straits here. Even last night when they take the lead on the Castellano's home run and then they can't lead it, Canable on the first pitch to Plummer gives up his first hit, which ends up leaving the yard. And then Eduardo Escobar ends up being the hero in extras. Uh, yes or no, do the Phillies make the playoffs? Uh, no. I want them to. I want our best players uh, I, in there. I do as well because I like to see a team go for it and open that wallet. Yeah. I just don't – I don't see it happening. It's a, I don't think they're – you know, they can't mash for forever. I'm worried. Uh, another team that a lot of us are rooting for because of the stars they've got, uh, the Angels. They blow a big lead on Sunday at home. They waste a multi-homer game by Shohei to lose their fifth straight. When does panic start to set in for Halo fans? Um, not for a while. I don't think there, there needs to be panic now. They're still playing really well. They're still getting really good pitching. Um, you know, Shohei hitting two home runs in a game and they lose. You know, hopefully that's not his only multiple home run of the game or of the season. Um, they, need to, they need to snap out of it, though. They, they don't want to bury themselves. It's still only May. They were, we're just a quarter of the way through the season, a little over. Um, panic is not yet. They're still playing really well. Um, they're still in playoff contention. So once they start to slide, um, or if they start to slide and we get some injuries, I think that's when, that's when they can start to panic. So they did suffer an injury. Anthony Rendon ended up on the injured list. And yep. you know, when you're paying a guy $250 million and he missed two thirds of last season, you're going to go, Oh gosh, really? Again, like we're heading down that road, but hopefully it's not too long, um, that he spends on there. Here's the good news for the Angels fans. The offense has been really, really good. And they actually have the second best run differential in the American League. Here's the bad news. You blew, you lost all the games against Toronto. And in three of those four games, you had the lead going into the seventh inning. If that happens once in a series or something in a four game series, fine, it happens, whatever. You've been a part of bullpens that have had rough days. But when it starts to happen every day or a couple times a week, that's when things can start to come apart of the seams, in my opinion. Am I wrong? No, you're right. But that's also an e the most easily addressed aspect of a team's makeup is, or the roster is getting going out and getting a bullpen guy. If that's what they think they need, there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of teams that are not in contention. If you want to go pull the trigger early and, and get ahead of the market, you can do that. You could pick a guy. This that can change things. Um, you know, Rendon, I, I love him to death, former teammate of mine, one of the best people you'll come around, great human being. I wish him nothing but the best. But they've been, you know, there was question marks with Noah Syndergaard coming off Tommy John and seeing what you're gonna get there. He's been spectacular. Great. Shohei's been really good. Um, Michael Lorenzen's been great in Lorenzen's a Lorenzen's been great. Role. So they've the big, the really big signings that they've had have been pre performing. And the fact that they had leads into the seventh is a positive sign because if you get, you know, one guy or if somebody turns the page in the bullpen, those become W's. The fact that you're, if their offense wasn't clicking, that would be a more uh, worrisome sign than having a guy in the bullpen or the bullpen blowing it um, because those are, those are better addressed because you, it's just harder to get an impact bat than it is to get an impact arm in the bullpen. Hey, Baseball Today is presented to you by these guys, Shady Rays, which is changing the way you wear sunglasses in the outdoors. It's got the best combination of fit, style, and performance without the big brand price tag. And it's got one of the most insane protection programs out there. Are you like me? Like several times a year, do you misplace your sunglasses? Do you sit on them in your car? Well, don't worry. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacement. So if you lose your break of pair, even on day one of the purchase, they will send you a brand new pair. And even with that crazy protection program, they tell you that these shades have some of the best quality ever, ever. You cannot go wrong with these for the summer. They also provide, if you want to feel good about a purchase that you make, 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order. They have donated over 20 million meals to date. So you can look good in your shades and feel great about making an impact on this country. And exclusively to our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their very best deal of the season. So right now, I want you to go to ShadyRays.com. Use the code word today for 50% off two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. Once again, ShadyRays.com. Code word is today. 50% off two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. 
I guarantee you, you are going to look way better than this guy. And if you end up breaking these babies or losing them, you'll get another pair to look this smooth. So we continue on. Uh, you can have any series this weekend. What was the one thing that maybe slid under the radar that you would like to say, baseball fans, pay attention to this? So it's in that same division, the AL West, and it's uh, the Texas Rangers. Mm. And it's Mr. Marcus Simeon, who signed a monster deal for the Rangers, and deservedly so. Hit like 45 home runs quietly, you know, outside of Vladdy Jr., who I wish there was a, a, a Cy Young an offensive player, you know, the Hank Aaron award was more significant. And then the MVP would be like the better of the two hmm. because Vladdy jr. Deserved the MVP because of how good he was, but his teammate, Marcus Simeon had an incredible year played a second base. That was stellar. Um, but this series against the A's, he came back, back to Oakland. He went five for 13 with his first home run of the season had seven RBI. He had one RBI in at least, Every game, in each game, he had at least an RBI. Uh, he raised his OPS 50 points in just three games. It was ridiculously low, but that is a good sign for a great hitter to start breaking out because he did it, and he looks more comfortable at the plate, and it's, and it's a really good sign for their offense. And they're built to mash, too, kind of like the Phillies. Um, and if, if the halo starts to go down and, and if the Astros show a little bit of vulnerability, they can make a push here. Yeah, they uh, they had a tough loss yesterday, a game that yeah. they led late in Oakland, but ended up losing uh, in walk-off fashion. But they have been one of the great surprise teams, in my opinion, right? When they spent a half a billion dollars on the middle infield, I went, okay, this might be for somewhere down the road, like two good guys who have had really good careers to this point, but it's not going to make a difference in 2022. It might in future years. You know, you get some of the younger guys who come up, they see how to work, they see how to become professionals, see what it takes to be an elite player in this league. But the fact that they are now within two games of 500, more than a quarter of the way in the season, surprising to me. I'm happy for them. There's no Me question. too. Again, that's the a team that went for it, spent some money on some yeah. really, really good players to see them in contention, I think is really good for the game. For me, uh, it's one of the teams you mentioned earlier, uh, the Miami Marlins. They lost the series against the Atlanta Braves. The one they did win on Saturday was because of Sandy Alcantara, who is a guy I think we continue to underappreciate, if you will. Okay, tied a career high with 14 strikeouts, eight innings pitched against the Braves. This is four straight games with no more than one earned run allowed. He leads the show with 67-plus innings pitched so far. So he's been out there, he's been doing his job, and he keeps his squad in games. And on those days where he's elite, he is almost single-handedly winning games for the Marlins. Yeah, man, special. He's been kind of under the radar for a few years now, and he's really kind of starting to shine. Um, and this is another sign for the Phillies that I'm worried about them because a good pitcher can beat good hitting any day of the week. And if you're not pitching on your own or if you're not hitting at all, the Marlins are, they're not going to be pushovers for anybody when you no. see, you know, Alcantara come up and, and dominate. So he's, he's incredible. He's really fun to watch. He's not fun to watch against your favorite team. If you have one out there, because he's, he used to be just a hard thrower and he's learned how to pitch quite a bit. So he's, he's, he's a special guy. He's got, you know, a dark horse for that NL Cy Young. Oh yeah. I think he's going to be uh, very much into it. And, he signed kind of that below market value, but he got the stability and the security that he wanted, which I never am against. I Me mean, either. you know, when, you know, you, you're changing your whole life, your family's totally. life. If, if yeah. So it's good for the Marlins and good for the player. So, yeah. And, and listen, I've seen guys do it in the past, whether it was an Aaron Nola who signed one of those deals, uh, Luis Severino and with Severino, you know, right after he signed it, he got hurt. And, you yeah. know, people who were blasting him for taking a, a below market value deal, like, that's why you do it. You just Got never security. know, particularly on the pitching side of things. So he's been great, and he's been great for that team. I would just like to see them hit a little bit more because I feel like they're just – they're right there. They're really close to being an interesting squad. Jeter, Jeter thought the same thing. Yeah, no <laughs> shit, right? <laughs> All right, uh, crazy play uh, in that A's-Rangers game yesterday. It looked like Sean Murphy was blocking Ibanez from getting to the dish. They originally called him out. Texas came out and he said, well, listen, you didn't give him a path to go slide. Um, and so they checked the replay and they called it in and they said, nope, 
um, calling the field stands. And here's Tom Hallion making the call. It's it's great audio. Here we go. Well, you see Tom just. So if you didn't hear it clearly, <laughs> Tom Hallion is talking to the Rangers dugout. He says, listen, I have nothing to do with it. It's their fucking call. Uh, it's uh, that's Tom Hallion for you. Yeah, man. Uh, I still have no idea what the blocking the plate rule is. I don't understand it. Um, if that's not blocking the plate, I'm going to need some, I'm going to need some clearance on uh, some clarity on what that really means because I, I'm baffled. Um, I love Sean Murphy. He's an Ohio guy, right? State. Um, nice. I got to be over there with him. He's, but you didn't give him a path. What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to teach your, your runners how to get there safely if you have no idea what the rule is? So they need to, they need to, to clarify it real quick. I got to be honest with you. I think sometimes we just make up shit as we go along. Like they're in the <laughs> yeah, replay absolutely. center in Chelsea and they're going, yeah, let's not change it. I yeah. don't think so. So, by the way, Dayton and Wright State, I thought were rivals. You guys can't. Get we them. are. But once you, you know, Ohio, once you get out into the major leagues, I'm rooting oh, for you. I'm a big Joe Smith Ohio. fan. You know, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, uh, you know, I thought he was going to get traded Murphy before the season. He hasn't hit quite as well, but that is one of the strongest men you'll ever come across. Wow. Um, the home run he hit earlier in that series in center field, that's Yoana Cespedes territory um, way up like wild the, the what you get out of him so he's he's got a cannon he hits monster home runs um and he's a big boy so he blocks that plate but not block the plate but did but with did his it. badonka dunk <laughs> and it's true once the once the replay goes to new york it, it's out of my fucking hands but you know what we know that we've known for years that tom hallian had a potty mouth because it was i like, love it it was like six years ago last week or something that he had the whole cinder guard chase utley thing Robbie, do we the have jackpot. That? Yeah, do we do we have that? Yeah, you're putting. Yeah, here we go. Listen, I'm telling you, our ass is in the jackpot now. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's I'm just telling you. <laughs> Fucking motherfucker. You know what? That, that, that's you got. You got it. Okay, get it. You got everything out. Did you play for Terry? I did. I was there. I was in the bullpen for that game. Uh, brilliant, man. I love Terry Collins. I think he just had a birthday the other day. Um, he does some S and Y stuff with me. Right. That guy is full of so many good stories. He told a good uh, Tommy Lasorda story that I can't, I don't want to share because it's kind of personal. Legend. Um, he's one of the guys that dedicated his life to the game, put yep. so many years in it. Just he's one of the reasons why baseball is great. But Tom Hallion handled that situation perfectly, I think. I, I still don't know what ass in the jackpot means, um, but I'm here for it. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> Do you remember? You probably don't remember this, but when that, um piece of video and audio came out major league baseball is like we can't have this out we can't i'm like that is the greatest piece of video i've ever seen why in the world would you not want it out yeah uh, oh it was so good for the game because we never got or it's been so long since we got a rant like that um a lou Pinella days you know what i mean it's good for the game it, you know it's not the the shining star moment that, that you want but it's what? it's it's uh relatable it's real and it's, it's real yeah it's that's good for the game yep uh what do you have coming up on john boy media when's the next shea station out so we just recorded it'll come out later i recorded right before uh you and i went live um i'll actually be going to cleveland uh june 9th through the 12th i'll be doing color on the radio for the a's which is exciting. Nice. So if you want to tune into your AM dial, actually, uh, it's the A's radio broadcast is all digital now. So you yes, can tune is. in anywhere. Um, kind of cool. Uh, but then uh, Shea Station, that, that's awesome. it. Every, at the end of every series and before we preview the next one. Cool. All right. Um, the reason I'm wearing the Washington uh, the the best. cherry blossoms. The best. Yeah, these, are, these are pretty cool uh, because I just interviewed Josiah Gray. That okay. is out for public consumption that dropped today. Real sweet kid. Nice guy. Uh, we talked a lot about the Duke trades. Got traded from Cincinnati to L.A. and then L.A. to Washington. Uh, what it's like when you struggle out there, particularly against your old team with the Dodgers, where he got uh, his – I don't think his ass was putting a jackpot, but he got his <laughs> ass handed to him last week. He talked about how he was dealing with that and the, all sorts of stuff and how it is being on a young, rebuilding team and getting your shot. So uh, a lot of interesting stuff with that. And we just recorded Trevor May, who – you know, there hasn't been a lot with him since he got injured. He kind of yeah. covers the whole dynamic about it. That's coming out on Thursday. That's great. Uh, if you want to, I can't wait to tune into Trevor May. First of all, great, 
always forthcoming, one of the best voices you'll hear from a baseball player. Yes. But if you're curious what it's like being on the DL, kind of dealing with some some weird insight, I guarantee you he's um, forthcoming with with some emotion and some real insight there. Totally. And we cover we'll a lot behind about, the curtain. We, we totally talk a lot about um, what it was like when he got blasted. You know, the, he, he came out that night on May 2nd when he was basically in tears on the field because he was hurt and couldn't get his job done. And a lot of people were ripping him saying, well, you should have told the team he goes through why he didn't that, that moment. Yeah, man, it's brilliant. And I, I talked about it on the, on the post game when he did that. And then I talked about it with Jolly on Shea station. It was so like, I watched him, like I saw it and then it clicked. Like, what do I, he, it was him telling himself in that moment. Right. So I can't wait to tune in and to, to see what he has to say. As always, he was very real. We cover a lot of good stuff. Uh, Jerry, it was great having you on uh, the podcast slash YouTube version of baseball today. We always greatly appreciate it. We'll continue Love to listen it. to you and Jolly on Shea Station and catch you on the A's radio and catch you on SNY. You're just a man just blown up all over the place, which is a good thing. So I want to thank Robbie Scirocco for producing, Jerry Blevins for filling in for Trevor Plouffe. I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you Tuesday on Baseball Today with a special guest contributor.